Today, we're going to read a news article together, and you're going to learn lots of vocabulary, grammar, and even pronunciation naturally by reading this article with me. This is an article in the very popular online magazine, Time Out New York. And this article is about one of the most iconic buildings in New York and in the world, the Statue of Liberty. Welcome back to Jay for his English training. Of course, I'm Jennifer, and this is your place to become a fluent, confident English speaker. Let's get started. To read this article, we need to go onto my computer. So let's go onto my computer now and start the lesson. Welcome to my computer. As you can see, our famous landmark, the Statue of Liberty. So let's begin our article. The title is, You Can Finally Climb on Top of the Crown of the Statue of Liberty Again. Now, just in case you don't know what the crown is, Here's our Statue of Liberty. So the crown is this top part right here. And of course, it looks like what a king, queen, any royalty, what they wear on their head. That is the crown. So you could climb, climb up to the crown. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Why was the Statue of Liberty crown closed until now? Let's find out. Following a two and a half year closure caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the crown portion of the Statue of Liberty has officially reopened to the public this week. So let's look right here. Two and a half year. Now two and a half, a half is of course 0.5, right? So two and a half, that is 2.5. But why does it say year and why doesn't it say years? Hmm. That's because right here, two and a half, this is an adjective. Two and a half year, this whole thing is describing what type of closure it was, okay? And that's why year does not have a plural because adjectives don't have singular and plurals. This will make more sense if you look at it like, I took a 30-day vacation, okay? So notice here, I took a vacation. This is grammatically correct. What type of vacation? A short vacation, a long vacation, a relaxing vacation. All of those are adjectives, but I can also use a time period as an adjective. I took a 30 day vacation, a 30 month <laughs> vacation, a 30 minute vacation compared to, I took a vacation for 30 days. Now here is our noun, 30 days, which needs to be singular or plural. If it were one day, obviously singular, 30 more than one, so days. That is why you don't have an S here. I hear this mistake a lot from students. What else? Oh, let's look at this, reopened. When you add re in front of a verb, it means to do it again, okay? So I could say, I re-watched the movie. I can't think of a movie name. <laughs> I re-watched the movie. So this means I watched the movie again. I watched the movie again. So this is my verb, watch. It's just in the past simple and I'm adding re. You can add a dash there or you don't have to. It's optional in terms of spelling. I see it more commonly without the dash, but as you can see here in the article, they do have a dash. But your boss might say, hey, Julio, can you redo the report? Can you redo the report? He's asking you to do it again. Can you redo the report? So that's a very useful 
word to put in front of a verb. Notice the pronunciation. Re, re, redo, rewatch, reopen, remake. If you've been trying to visit the destination since March of 2020, though, you might have to wait a tad bit longer. Tickets to Access the Crown are basically sold out through October. Make sure to reserve your pass for a future date right here. So you can reserve your pass if you'd like. Okay, notice here, what verb tense is this? The present perfect continuous, have or has, depending on the subject. You have, it's just a contraction, V-E. So this is you have, you have equals you've as a contraction. Then we have been, and then we have our verb in ing. So that's the present perfect continuous. And we use this for an action that started in the past, but continues until now. And we want to stress the continuation of the action. That's the ing. I've been trying to book my ticket since March, since 2020, since this morning. Now, you could also say for two hours, for two years, for five days. So when we have a period of time, we use for and then we use since with a specific date. I like this one a tad bit, a tad bit. This is a very natural vocabulary choice and it means a little bit, a little bit, a tad. So you might say, I was a tad late today. So here, I was late today. How late were you? Ah, just a little, right? So you could say I was a little, that's very common. You probably know it. Here's a new fun, natural expression that's very common. I was a tad late today. You need this article, ah. Uh. You might say, I'm a tad tired today. So this is saying, I'm a little tired. Or uh, she's a tad hungry <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now. She's a tad, a little, tad, ad. Tad, don't forget that article. Let's move on. According to CNN, the National Park Service, which manages the landmark, was attempting to hold a soft reopening without too much advertisement in late October to celebrate the 136th anniversary of the statue's dedication in 1886. Okay, so here we have reopening again. Here we had reopen. Now we're having reopening. So they're opening it again. Opening it again. Reopening. I don't think there's anything else I want to teach you here. If you have comments about any of this, just put your comments in the chat and I will try to answer them or record a future video. This is a good one. I hope you already use this in your vocabulary, but according to someone or something. This is a very professional, formal business vocabulary. The CNN is a newspaper, a media group. So that is considered a something. But you could have a someone according to Brad. <laughs> Brad, the reporter, with the CNN, according to Brad, according to my mom, according to my boss, according to the news report. So it can be a someone or a something. Don't forget this too, and don't forget it's an ING, according to. Alas, folks got so excited about the announcement that those in charge had no choice but to work on a full-fledged opening this month. You're probably wondering what this alas means. This is an adverb. It's a little bit outdated, to be honest. I don't think you'll hear it that often, but it is interesting. You might hear it in movies more so. It's an adverb to express 
Disappointment, basically. Disappointment. So I might say, I wanted to go to the party, but alas, I had to work. So here, it, the sentence is correct without it. So it's not necessary, but I had to work. I wanted to go to the party, but I had to work. You don't know what my tone is. Am, am I upset that I missed the party? Am I relieved that I missed the party? If I add alas, you know I'm upset because it's used to express disappointment. I wanted to go to the party, but alas, I had to work. Alas, alas, but alas, I had to work. We had to hire people to get them up to speed to effectively run Crown Corporations. Jerry Willis, a spokesperson for Statue of Liberty National Monument and Ellis Island, said to CNN. Okay, we had to hire people. When you hire someone, it means you bring them into your company as an employee, as a worker, you give someone a job, right? So it's a very useful verb. This is a verb to give someone a job, to hire someone. Now, to get someone up to speed, to get someone up to speed. This is a great expression. This means to get someone up to speed. Okay. This means to give someone the information that they need to do the job or do the task. So if you were just hired to manage a project, but the project was already in progress, you need to know a lot of different things about that project. What is the timeline? What's the budget? Who's doing what? Who's in charge of what? What has already been accomplished? So if I share all that information with you, I'm doing it because I want to bring you up to speed. So this is the information you need to have, and this is the information you have. So I want you to, I want to bring you up to speed, which means to make sure your knowledge is where it needs to be. Now, this is very commonly used with two verbs to get someone up to speed or to bring someone up to speed. I think I use to bring someone up to speed in some of my examples because that's the one I use more frequently, but I also hear get someone up to speed. Both of these verbs are acceptable and they both have the same meaning. So this is an excellent expression to bring, to bring someone up to speed, okay? To give someone the information they need to complete a task. Now that task might be a job. It could be something more casual as well. Why was the Statue of Liberty crown closed? Great question. On March 16th, 2020, the National Park Service shuttered all operations at the Statue of Liberty in reaction to the pandemic. This is only used in a business context. The verb is to shutter, and this means to permanently close. To permanently close. So when a company or a business permanently closes, you can say the board shuttered that company. The board closed the company. The government shuttered that company. This could also be used in the passive. The company was shuttered. But again, this is very specifically a business verb. You won't use it outside of this context. Since then, although portions of the monument started welcoming visitors once more, the pedestal deck, for example, has been operating since July of 2021. The crown itself remained closed. I don't think there's anything there I need to teach you. 
Willis told CNN that a variety of factors contributed to the delayed reopening, including state and federal pandemic restrictions and dealing with a record low hiring pool. This is a useful expression, a record low. So of course you can have highs and lows. So let's say the average low is about here. Let's use the weather. So let's say in winter in your city, the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius, but, and that's the average temperature. But then one year your city had a record low. So it went down to five degrees Celsius or three degrees Celsius. So that means it was a record. It was a new accomplishment, a noteworthy event. So a record low means lower than average, lower than normally it is. Now a hiring pool. A hiring pool describes the amount of people available to be hired. And remember, we already learned what that meant up here. When you hire someone, you give them a job. So if I want to be hired, it means I want to receive a job. So to be hired, this is when you receive a job to be hired, to receive a job, to hire someone is to give someone a job. These are two must know verbs and make sure you don't confuse them because I could say I was hired by the company. The company hired me. So passive, I'm receiving the job. Active, the company is giving the job. And remember, hiring pool is just the availability of people able to be hired. So maybe there are 100 people in the hiring pool, 100 people. But it could also be a million people. It could be five people. The number could be any number at all. So we'll just say 500 people. How do I get to the Statue of Liberty crown? Great question. Would-be visitors need to buy tickets in advance, which include a round-trip ferry ride to Liberty Island and usually a pit stop at the Ellis Island National Museum of Immigration as well. Certainly a must-see in of itself. All right. There's some great vocabulary here for travel vocabulary. Round trip. Round trip. So a round trip means you go and you return. A one-way trip is you go. That's it. So of course you need a round trip because you need to come back. It's an island. <laughs> you can't be stuck on the island, right? So it makes sense that it's a round trip, but you might commonly purchase a one way ticket to Spain because you want to stay in Spain for a longer period of time. Or after that, you might go to another country, but you don't necessarily want to go to Spain and come back. If you do, then that's a round trip ticket to Spain. A pit stop. This is when you go from destination A to B but you need to do something in the middle. So maybe I'm going from my house to my office, but I need to make a pit stop at the bank and take out some money or deposit some money. Or I need to make a pit stop at the grocery store and buy some milk. Or I need to make a pit stop at the mall and buy a new pair of shoes. So you're going from A to B, but then you stop somewhere before. 
So a pit stop. Pit is an adjective. It's just describing what type of stop. A pit stop. A temporary stop when going from point A to B. And it's a temporary stop for a specific purpose, such as to buy milk or to purchase something else or to drop something off. The passes will also grant you access to the Liberty National Monument, the pedestal and the crown of the monument. The Statue of Liberty Museum with its three interactive galleries and the grounds of Liberty Island and Ellis Island. Once on premise, you'll have to climb 10 stories, that's 215 stairs to be precise, to reach the statue's pedestal and another 162 stairs to actually get to the crown. In case you were wondering, there is an elevator, but it peaks at the pedestal portion of the monument. Needless to say, the extra workout to climb all the way to the top is absolutely worth it. All right. This is a must know expression right here. To be worth it. Do you see the verb to be? Is right here. To be worth it. So you could say, climbing to the top is worth it. So this is our something. This is commonly used as a gerund expression. Notice here, climbing to the top. I might say visiting the top. That, that would be a good gerund verb. Visiting the top. What happened to the rest of mine? I don't know where the rest of the text went. Sorry about that. Visiting the top is worth it. Seeing the top, climbing to the top. So a gerund verb, going to the top, taking pictures at the top is worth it. Now you could also say it is, it's, it's worth it to climb to the top. So you can absolutely see this and it's grammatically correct. We're starting with our subject, our verb, worth it, and then to climb to the top. This is grammatically correct. This, I would say, is more common. So the exact translation would be climbing to the top is worth it. And this gives you the chance to use a more advanced structure and use a gerund verb. And let's look at right here as well. Needless to say, this is a very advanced expression. It will help you sound professional. Needless to say. This is an expression that means information isn't surprising. So it's expected. Needless to say, the extra workout to climb all the way to the top is absolutely worth it. So this is a way of saying climbing to the top is worth it, but that's not surprising, right? Because let's look at the top. If you came all the way to New York and you visited the Statue of Liberty, why would you stay down here at the bottom when you can go to the top. Wouldn't it be worth it to go to the top? Of course it would. Needless to say, it's not surprising. It's expected that I would say it's worth it. And of course you would do that, right? I would totally want to go to the top. In fact, I've been to New York many times. I've been to the Statue of Liberty and I'm embarrassed to say, I didn't even know you could go to the top. So I'm a little bit embarrassed about that. And now I want to go to the top. What about you? Have you seen the Statue of Liberty in person? Did you know you could go to the top? Okay, needless to say, 
I might say, let's say it's been a very, very busy week at work, extremely busy, a record breaking busy week. Now I might say tomorrow is Friday and needless to say, we all need a break. So it's Friday, which means it's the weekend. It's time for you to relax and recover from the busy, busy, busy week. And of course, I'm say we need a break, but that's expected. It's obvious we need a break because we just had a very busy week. Needless to say, needless to say. I might even say something like, needless to say, as a language learner, it's important to expand your vocabulary. So my sentence is, as a language learner, it's important to expand your vocabulary. But I'm adding this expression to let you know, well, this isn't very surprising, is it? You know this. It's expected. Needless to say. An excellent expression to add to your vocabulary. And that is the end of our article. Amazing job today. Think of all the natural grammar, vocabulary, and even pronunciation that you learned in this very interactive way, in this very natural way. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And this is the first video I've created in this style. So please, I'd love to hear your feedback. Did you like this style of lesson? Did you find it useful? Is there anything I can do to improve this style of lesson? Would you like to see more lessons like this in the future. Share your feedback, any feedback, positive or negative, in the comments below so I can keep making the best content possible for you. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying.